And I remember my first game with Phillip. We ran the ball so much, and we threw the ball, I want to say, like eight times against the Raiders. And this was Phillip, like, first game eight or ten times. And Phillip threw me a touchdown, and I ended up, I was, you know, I ended up playing, you know, okay. But I was so, excuse my language, I was so pissed at the time. We only threw the ball ten times. <laughs> but when you got a guy like LaDainian, that's just what happens. That's you know what, what I'm saying? Yeah, and then I catch the ball. There's plenty of times I've caught the ball and ran down to the one, and all I hear is A-L-T. And I'd be like, oh, I got this down here, man. I, well, I can't throw the ball. You know, but it was all love, and it's, and it's great to be able to play with someone of that magnitude and be able to tell your kids down the road and even down the road. Uh, you know, I got a chance to play with a, a guy uh, that was a difference maker in the game. Antonio, you, you got to play, you got to mentor Hunter Henry. Now he's with New England. He's wearing number 85 because of you. What does that mean for you? Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Uh, I, you know, I, I was really, uh, you know, I wanted him to be here, obviously. I'm quite sure a lot of us did. Uh, unbelievable player unbelievable kid um, and now he's a young man obviously so he was like a little brother to me and um, can't say enough about the character and his work ethic now, obviously due to injuries and things of that nature you know I still don't think we've seen the best of him and uh, for him to wear the 85 uh, it shows a lot about how he respects you know my work ethic and the thing that I tried to bring to the table which is uh, you know obviously talent is the foundation but hard work to me was always the ceiling. You know, when you mix, you know, intertwined talent and hard work, um, you know, you get certain things that pay off for you. And that's what I tried to do. That's what I tried to implement. I tried to say it. More importantly, I tried to do it. I wasn't a man of many words. I was a man that just come out, do what I need to do, and let that do the speaking for me. And um, I'll be looking forward to seeing how, you know, he does. As uh, long as he don't do well against the Chargers, I'm okay. <laughs> Antonio, in your opinion, who is the greatest uh, tight end of all time? Uh, you know, we, I mean, I had this debate with Kellen Winslow Sr. Uh, me and Shannon Sharp go at it all the time. And, and obviously with the up and coming guys now, uh, you know, I think everybody in their own respective way have some of the similar impacts to their organization. And, um, you know, when I think about some of the guys that I got a chance to play against <laughs> and um, compete against, uh, they brought the best out of me, and I think that's, you know, that's what it was about. I, you know, even when I played against Tony, when I played against, I, I remember Dallas Clark. I, you know, I remember Jeremy Shockey, guys that don't really be brought up. And I don't hear Shockey name a lot. I don't hear Dallas Clark name a lot. But those guys were some of the guys that allowed me to be Antonio Gates, uh, pushed me to be Antonio Gates, if you will. So, uh, you know, I had a, a unique. Um, turning point for the position and I, I felt like I, when I got here the position was not the way it was when I left and I think that was the, probably the biggest focus and I think that's what I hang my hat on and seeing guys now play the position at a level that I knew when I got here tight ends were catching like four or five touchdowns a year now every time you look up a guy got 10 you know what I mean I remember I, and I didn't even know at the time that it would be this impactful I just came and I played and I did what was asked and I would get cussed out a lot. I was always in the wrong space at the wrong time, but I had like this basketball style. Now I see it so much now, this little pivot route, this jerk route, and those are the routes that it was like natural for me. And I, I'm glad that the position itself has come a long way. And now I hope guys like Kittles, uh, guys like that constantly push the position to be better and better. You got your speech ready for uh, when you get your gold jacket? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> no, I, I got, it, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a, uh, no, I'm not going to wing it because I got a lot of people to think because, you know, when you wing it, somebody's going to be upset. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm not going to wing it, but what I am going to do is just try to focus on the present because I know, uh, you know, that's a difficult team to make. And I've seen a lot of guys, you know, even like this year's class, I'm just watching, man. I'm just thinking to myself, how, how do you leave somebody off? Like how, I, you know what I mean? It's so hard to try to distinguish who gets on and who, you know. So I just, you know, right now I'm just trying to make sure I get in. And then when I get in, I the speech wouldn't matter. It'll be all, in, you know, it'll be my life. So it, it really wouldn't matter what I say. Uh, but what I am going to say is that my speech will probably be so different than the ones I've heard over the course of five, six, ten years. Because a lot of these guys grow up wanting to be there. You know, they grow up wanting to play for the Chargers or wanting to play in the NFL. I didn't necessarily have that same goal, that same dream, you know, so, and I think people need to know that, you know, and I think it's always a kid who needs to know that, you know, no matter what happens, if you stay focused on certain things, things, good things can always happen, um, 
But I think that's why mine would be so unique. I was a basketball player who loved the game of basketball, who took my competitive edge and I applied it to the game of football. And I didn't, I mean, I remember my rookie year, my first two years, I was, after games, I was going in the locker room. Like, I didn't know nobody. I didn't have nobody to go say, oh, man, when we played Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, or, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All my dudes was playing on the court, in the hardwood, indoors, you know? So I just remember that, and then I had to finally build a friend base by going to the Pro Bowl, by competing against guys. I didn't know nobody my first years. Who helped you through that transition from 